Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And I told you guys, do not take your eyes off of Janet Yellen. Remember, she's an ex-Fed member. And now coming into the Treasury. Now the Fed has a lock on both. She knows what the mission is. They're going to print more money, guys, to fund this fourth industrial revolution. Now, what comes up in the actual videos I'm going to let you listen to is the actual $15 an hour. Now, guys, we know $15 an hour is not a problem for these big corporations. The problem is it's for the small businesses. They're going to run you right out. So what is a small business going to turn to? Automation, robots. Drones. I don't have to worry about paying that $15 an hour. And they know it. There's no way these small businesses can survive paying someone $15 an hour. Now, these big corporations, they can afford to pay $25 an hour, as we know. And then also, you're going to hear Senator Toomey talking about capital gains tax on money you haven't even gotten. So it's just assuming that you're getting the profits. They're going to tax it. So just like I stated, guys, when the Democrats are in office, their narrative is for the people and against Wall Street. But we know at the end of the day, it's not. It's towards moving towards the New World Order goal and then also destroying this current economy in order to bring on the new crypto economy, guys. And that's all they're doing. So, yes, in crypto for these next four years, it's going to make it seem like we're going backwards, but we're not. We're going to be going fast forward. Remember in Freemasonry, you have to take one step back in order to go two steps forward. That's how it works. Because you have to make it seem like you're doing something for the people. That's why you take that one step back. But you know that you're moving towards your goal. And we see that happening throughout this process. We see that people get a little check when they first start to see word and then drain them for months and months and over, and then finally pass a bill. So what does the new world order go off of, guys? Problem, reaction, solution. So right now, guys, we are in the problem and reaction stage. Now what's going to happen is they're going to kill this economy, and they're going to run in with the crypto for the solution, and then we know universal basic income. As we see, majority of people are still getting free money. It's a trend, and they want people to be on this trend in order to get it moved forward. They want to bring America to its knees. So then, therefore, they're going to run in with the solution. And we know, just like I stated, universal basic income, this programmable money. And so, therefore, they do what? That's right. Tax the globe. That's the end game. Y'all enjoy the video. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget, everything the New World Order does is already planned out. I believe is viewed it the same way, especially during these last few months. When economists look back on the pandemic, I expect they'll conclude that Congress's actions averted a lot of suffering. But more must be done. Economists don't always agree, but I think there is a consensus now. Without further action, we risk a longer, more painful recession now and longer-term scarring of the economy later. The pandemic has caused widespread devastation. Whole industries have paused their work. 18 million unemployment insurance claims are being paid every week. Food bank shelves are going empty. The damage has been sweeping. And as the president-elect said last Thursday, our response must be two. Over the next few months, we're going to need more aid to distribute the vaccine, to reopen schools, to help states keep firefighters and teachers on the job. We'll need more funding to make sure unemployment insurance checks still go out and to help families who are at risk of going hungry or losing the roof over their heads. Neither the president-elect nor I proposed this release, relief package without an appreciation for the country's debt burden. But right now, 
with interest rates at historic lows, the smartest thing we can do is act big. In the long run, I believe the benefits will far outweigh the costs, especially if we care about helping people who have been struggling for a very long time. People worry about a K-shaped recovery, but well before COVID-19 infected a single American, we were living in a K-shaped economy, one where wealth built upon wealth while working families fell farther and farther behind. This is especially true for people of color. At the Fed, I became accustomed to the institution's dual mandate to promote stable prices and maximum employment. As Treasury Secretary, I think there will be a dual mission too, helping Americans endure the final months of this pandemic, keeping people safe while getting them back to work. That's our first task. But then there's the longer term project. We have to rebuild our economy so that it creates more prosperity for more people and ensures that American workers can compete in an increasingly competitive global economy. Members of the committee, these are very ambitious goals, and I know we will need to work together. Economy one in particular is the issue of raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I will say that I've been talking to businesses around the country and specifically at home. The one thing that even the Congressional Budget Office recognizes is that by increasing the minimum wage to uh, $15 an hour, it could shutter somewhere around 3.7 million jobs on the high end, a minimum of 1.3 million jobs in our economy. And the last thing this economy needs as we attempt to recover is a loss of 1.3 to 3.7 million jobs. But in addition to that, it would increase the cost of doing business uh, significantly. It would certainly devastate the opportunity to develop new jobs in rural America and in rural South Carolina, as well as for those minorities and women coming into the workforce, it would actually have a disproportionate impact on those folks that you said in your testimony you want to target for relief and opportunity. Uh, said differently, over 110,000 restaurants have closed during the pandemic, thousands of those restaurants in South Carolina. By increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour and eliminating tips for servers at restaurants, we will do uh, actually what I would consider an existential threat to those restaurants and frankly, and more importantly, to those employees of restaurants. How, how do we grapple with parts of this package that really are philosophical in nature and denies the practical reality that comes from it. Well, Senator, I appreciate that question. Um, you know, President-elect Biden and, uh, has proposed raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour because right now we have millions of American workers who are putting their lives on the line uh, to keep their communities functioning and sometimes even working multiple jobs uh, aren't earning enough to put food on the table and um, a roof over their heads. And um, they're suffering in countless ways, especially during this pandemic and really struggling to get by. And raising the minimum wage would really help many of those workers um, and that's the reason for doing it. Now, in terms of potential job loss, there's now a large economics literature on this, and much of it suggests that the, um, raising minimum wages, this is what researchers often look at what happens when one state raises its minimum wage and a neighboring state leaves it alone to see how businesses fare um, in the two different places with different treatments. And the, the findings are that the job loss 
is 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 very minimal, if if anything. Um, so I think that the likely impact on um, jobs is minimal. That's my reading of the research, and of course, I agree with you. Small businesses are struggling, and it's critical to help those businesses. I appreciate the PPP package uh, in in the recently passed bill. I pledge that we will do everything we possibly can to get that money out to struggling businesses effectively. Um, it, it is critically important to help those businesses. Um, the money that's been allocated to CDFIs to support them and their lending, especially in low and moderate income communities, that's critically important aid. And President-elect Biden has proposed yet more aid to these businesses so that they can survive this pandemic uh, and get back on their feet. Well, uh, thank you for your answer, uh, Dr. Yellen. I, I would say that uh, there's no doubt that when you artificially increase the minimum wage, you are going to permanently decrease the number of jobs in the economy. When we have a market-driven increase in the minimum wage, we see production go up and the value of work increases as well. Hear me? Yes. Thank, thank you. And Dr. Yellen, uh, welcome and thank you for your past service to the country and for your willingness to serve in this capacity. I look forward to working with you, but I have to admit that the contours of the stimulus bill as proposed by the Biden administration are uh, going to make that difficult. Uh, the ink is barely dry on the second large stimulus package in American history, uh, nearly a trillion dollars after nearly three trillion dollars earlier in the year, and we're looking at another spending blowout. The only organizing principle that I can discern is it seems to spend as much money as possible, seemingly for the sake of spending it, uh, an additional $1,400 per person. Uh, regardless of the person's circumstances, guaranteeing that uh, there will be several thousand dollars in payments going to families with six-figure incomes who've had no income interruption whatsoever just makes absolutely no sense. Increasing unemployment payments such that a majority of unemployed workers will make more money being unemployed than they make working can only slow the return to a, a normal, healthy labor market. Uh, sending states more money than they've lost in lost revenue or in additional spending is just not a good idea. And I completely agree with Senator Scott. Obviously, an arbitrary government-mandated minimum wage increase is going to cost jobs. If not, then, of course, we would just raise the minimum wage to 20 or 30 or $50 an hour. Obviously, it will result in some job losses. So these proposals are not targeted at those people who really need them. They are, it can't be justified on the grounds of effectiveness, and it's going to be hard to get to a bipartisan agreement based on this. I will say I'm pleased to hear your testimony that you think that the tax increases, the really massive tax increases that the president-elect Biden is proposing will be delayed, uh, which, by the way, is the implicit economic damage that those tax increases will do. Uh, it's quite a staggering list. Huge increases in individual rates, adding a 12.4% payroll tax on upper income people. We'll have many Americans with combined state and local marginal tax rates well into the 60 percentages. Um, huge increases on corporate America, um, which will make America a less attractive place to headquarter a multinational company, which will make it less attractive to invest here. And I would point out that we reached record low unemployment rates and rising wages, especially for lowest income people after our tax reform. Not sure why we want to go back on that. But let me zero in on one particular idea that some of our colleagues have suggested. And I think Senator Wyden was alluding to this during his opening comments. And this is the idea that separate and apart from the Biden administration's proposal to double the taxes on capital gains. Some are suggesting that we start to impose taxes on unrealized gains. An asset appreciates and we charge a tax on that, even though there's no liquidity event, 
There's no sale. There's no actual realized gain. We'll, I guess, have a mark to market if, if, if that's even possible in some cases and impose a tax on that. So uh, my question for you, Dr. Yellen, is without getting into any particular bill, do you support the idea of taxing unrealized appreciation of assets? Well, I do believe that capital gains should at some point be taxed. Um, right, right now, step up of basis um, at death provides a route by which a very large share of capital gains um, are never taxed uh, at right, all. That, that, that is a, that's a separate issue. That's a distinct uh, issue. The idea of, of an annual tax on an unrealized appreciation of assets is what I'm I, asking about. Well, I, I'm, what I wanted to say is that there is simply different ways of addressing the issue of how to make sure that some taxes are collected on capital gains. And this mark-to-market approach is one, one method, but certainly not the only method. And there may be technical challenges associated with it. So I would want to have the administration look at different approaches.